Chris is preparing to work in the lab. Let's see what's on today's task sheet. Oh no! It's Maria's birthday and Chris forgot to buy her a present. Chris, why don't you prepare a handmade present for Maria? A bar of aromatic soap. That's a great idea, Chris. Okay, let's get some potassium iodide and hydrogen peroxide from the safety cabinet. Using a spatula, Chris weighs the potassium iodide in a beaker. He dissolves it in approximately 10 milliliters of distilled water. Then, he pours 50 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide into another flask. He squirts a bit of liquid soap into a measuring cylinder. Hmm, I wonder what Chris is planning to do next. Oh no, no Chris. In an exothermic reaction, energy is set free in the form of heat or light. In an equation, you could say that the edux react to products plus energy. The edux overcome an activation energy and reach the energetically lower, and therefore preferred, state of the products. As a result, the bench is now a total mess. Oh, Chris, don't give up now. I'm sure Maria would appreciate a nice perfume. Why don't you make one for her? Chris uses a measuring cylinder for the ethanol and the pipette and the pipette aid to get exactly 10 milliliters of butyric acid. As for the sulfuric acid, due to its high density, Chris decides to use the syringe. The round bottom flask, which has a stirring bar inside, is secured with a clamp. As the reaction needs to be kept at reflux, Chris turns the water for the cooling circuit on, which flows through the reflux condenser and cools it. A second stirring bar in the water bath prevents a boiling delay. With the jack stand, he lifts the stirring hot plate and the water bath. Chris, take down the drying tube, this makes no sense. If you want, you can put a glass bubbler on top. Boiling under reflux will take some time, but Maria will arrive any minute now. Maybe you should go and tell the others to delay her if they see her. Oh no, Maria's already here. That was close. Quick, let's proceed with the distillation. In order to separate and purify the good smelling ethyl butyrate from the rest, Chris must distill the mixture. He needs a distillation head with a thermometer and a Liebig condenser attached to a distillation adapter, which is connected with a small round bottom flask. Chris, don't forget to wrap the flask and the distillation head with tin foil before you start, in order to gain some time. Look! The first drops of your distillate. Chris transfers the distillate into a separatory funnel and extracts the ester. A phase separation occurs where the ester, due to its lower density, forms the upper phase, whereas the aquatic phase remains at the bottom. Now that you have transferred everything into the vial, you should seal it. 
You could use some parafilm and tin foil to decorate it nicely. Hey Maria! Look, it's Carl over there! Chris, you made it! Ah, that went well! Oh no. Chris, don't tell me that you transferred the wrong phase. <laughs>